What makes you feel like giving up? When it's hard to get started? When it takes too much time? Too much repetition? Too much discomfort? Too much saying no to other things you want to be doing? Sometimes you just want to say, enough, it's not worth it. I give up. But when you choose to stick it out, when you choose to put in the time, the repetition, the discomfort, the focus. You find it gets easier. You gain momentum. You can see the goal line ahead. And you get excited as you make your final rush to the finish. God can give you the power to stick with it and follow through. Whether you're learning an instrument or you're learning how to shoot a three-pointer, or maybe simply trying to clean your really messy room. <laughs> With God's help, you'll be saying, can't stop, won't stop. When you choose to finish what you start, even when it's tough, others can see God's power at work in you. That's why determination is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Cause worship it's about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. kids how's everybody doing this morning i'm here with elijah and we just wanted to say hi and kind of lead into the lesson so um to get in the right mindset for the lesson um elijah and i were just talking about some things that are easy to start but hard to finish and maybe seem impossible 
So Elijah, tell me about some things in your life, whether it's um, at home or at school that maybe are easy to start, but are hard to finish and maybe seem impossible at times. Um, one time I tried to build a castle. At first it was easy, then um, when I almost got done, it was kind of fun. Okay, no, that's good. I could see that. You start building something, um, and you get into it, and then you realize you've got a long ways to go, so it gets kind of hard at the end. That's good. I know, um, what about anything, what about school? Is there anything with like school? Uh, with my math papers. Oh, okay, so maybe sometimes it's easy to start math, but you don't want to finish it? Mm -hmm. For me, I feel like it's writing. I um, get really excited about writing, and I start writing, and then it seems impossible, and like I'm never gonna finish. So for today's lesson, um, it's Jesus's final orders to his disciples and his ascension. So let's um, listen in about the final orders that Jesus gave his disciples that seemed impossible and what they did about it. And then we'll come back together and we'll just um, close and talk about the verse and we'll pray together. All right, we'll see you soon. Hey guys, Haley here. Welcome to my studio for sticky stuff. Today, I am venturing into something I have never tried before. You know that feeling you get when you're about to try something new that you don't know how to do, and you're just so excited by the thrill of it that you can just barely wait? Well, that's how I feel when I'm looking at this table. Ooh, look. Ooh. Somehow, these random, ordinary household items mix together and turn into slime. Yes, slime! So the truth is, I am not crafty. Like, I've never done crafts before in my life. In my life! So, as you can imagine, this is a little daunting for me. But if you know me, you know I love a good challenge. So let's not get stuck talking. Let's make some slime. <laughs> Apparently you need this much. Okay, so step one is to pour one cup of glue into a bowl. Oh, fiddlesticks. Can't find my measuring cups. That's not gonna work. Hmm. No, this doesn't have a measuring on it. This doesn't either. I feel like you would need that for contact solutions. Hmm, maybe if I go, it's not my treasure chest. Oh, come on. I guess I'll just have to improvise. When in doubt, pick the biggest cup. Slime time, here we come. Whoop, whoop. Okay, it's not heavy at all. Yeah! Go, 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 go! Oh man, this is great. This is also a great workout for you all at home. Oh, that sure is a lot of glue. Too much glue. You know what I really need right now? A fresh cup of determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started even if it seems impossible. Today's story is about Jesus and his disciples just before Jesus goes back up to heaven. Let's see what he does and how his disciples respond. As for me, I found the right size cup! Looks like I've got some slime to make. See you in a little bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the books of Matthew, Luke, and Acts. When Jesus returned to life, roller coasters hadn't been invented yet. But as far as his friends were concerned, they might as well have been living on one wild coaster ride. Peter and Matthew might have gone over the whole story one more time as they walked the dusty roads from Galilee back towards Jerusalem. Remember how it started? Jesus does all these miracles. Thousands of people gathered to listen to him. And we hear God's voice saying, this is my son and I love him. But then he gets all those threats from the religious leaders. And he ignores them all and raises Lazarus to life. That lousy Judas betrays him. The religious leaders arrest him. And I run away like a fool. And Jesus is killed. But he comes back to life. And now we get to hang out with him. I think he's got big plans. 
Did you hear how he told me at the lake to take care of his followers? And what he said to us all on the mountain in Galilee. About making new disciples? Yeah. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Big job. How do you remember all this stuff? I record it. You should write a book sometime. I'm still not so sure about the Holy Spirit part. Same. But Jesus is here with us now. We can do anything while he stays with us. Forever! Ahead, Peter and Matthew and the other disciples could see Jerusalem in the distance, the temple rising above the other buildings. He said to meet him back in Jerusalem. For the Feast of Pentecost, probably. That would be the perfect time for him to do something big. If he wants followers in all nations, that must mean we take over Israel first, right? I don't know about the takeover part. As Jesus' friends returned to Jerusalem, Jesus led them to a hill outside the city near Bethany. Nice view of the city from here. I bet he's finally going to give us all the big plan now. He already did. Make disciples of all nations. Yeah, but how? Is he going to gather 50,000 people at Pentecost? Or maybe he'll take us all with him on an epic road trip. He probably wouldn't have brought us all up here if he didn't have something big to say. Sure enough, as they ate a meal on the side of the hill, Jesus told them, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit thing again. Peter couldn't take it anymore. He had to ask. Lord, are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel now? Everyone stopped talking, then looked to Peter, then to Jesus, who shook his head. You should not be concerned about times or dates. The Father has set them by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. The disciples exchanged glances. Okay, you did say the all nations part already, but wh where will you be? And please, can you explain how the Holy Spirit's going to help us? As Jesus smiled at his friends, he lifted his hands and spoke a blessing over them. He's not answering the question. As Jesus was speaking, something incredible happened. Slowly, he began to rise into the air. He's standing in the air. How is he standing in the air? Jesus' friends stared, mouths open. Soon, a cloud hid him from view, but they continued to gape. Men of Galilee. The disciples blinked and finally looked down to discover two tall men dressed in white standing right beside them. Why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. Come back? Come back when? But the man in white were gone. He did say, don't be concerned about times or dates. But he just gave us the biggest job ever. Tell everyone in the whole world about him? There's gotta be a plan. The Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit is the plan. But we don't know what the Holy Spirit is. Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem. So, wait. That's the plan? That's the plan for now. Jesus gave his followers what seemed to be an impossible job. Share the story of Jesus and his love for every nation across the entire world. But soon, he gave them everything they needed to not only start the job, but keep going. Well, it's taken me a few failed attempts, but I did it. Woo! Homemade slime, ladies and gents. This stuff is wild. Wow. Woo! And now I just gotta figure out how to get it all unstuck from my fingers. Back to the story. Let's get to it. From the beginning, God had a plan to rescue us. We see it in the Old Testament when he told Noah to build an ark to rescue his family from the flood. 
and when he used Moses to rescue the Jewish people from slavery out of Egypt. Then finally, he sent the ultimate savior, his son, Jesus. Jesus loves us so much that he died to save us. And then he rose back to life. But he knew he was eventually going to leave his disciples behind. He gave his friends a mission and promised that he would send them a helper. Oh. Jesus' mission for his friends is also true for us today, to tell others about him. And just like he promised he'd always be with them, he's always with us too. Now that's some good <laughs> news! It must have seemed impossible to the disciples to carry out Jesus' mission. Sometimes things seem impossible for us too. But we can remember that God is always with us. And when he says he's always with us, that means always. And remembering that God's with you and that he can do the impossible can help you stay determined when you're doing something new or something difficult. And since everybody's different, different things are going to be difficult for everybody. For me, it was making slime. But to some of you, you could do this with your eyes closed. I definitely couldn't. I could not do that. To other people, hiking a mountain, or learning how to play a musical instrument, or juggling a soccer ball might seem impossible, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Just remember God's with you and keep going. That's the one thing to remember today. Keep going even when it seems impossible. Well, I'm gonna go play with my slime <laughs> and maybe make some more with different colors <gasps> and glitter. Oh, the possibilities are endless. See you guys next time. Wow, Jesus had given his followers what seemed like an impossible job to share his story and his love in every nation across the entire world. It was a huge task for these people to take on, but Jesus had given them everything they needed to know. And that relates to you and I today too, you know, um, Jesus wanting us to share his word, his story and his love and how that can seem impossible to us at times. You know, um, whether you feel like you don't have the right words to say or if you're nervous. Um, but as we saw in today's lesson, um, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to help guide us and empower us and give us the right words to say to share his word. So if you ever feel like you're nervous or not sure of what to say, just ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, can you help me? Can you empower me and give me confidence and make me bold so I can spread your word and your story and your love? And please give me the right words to say. Um, and please help me to keep going even when it seems impossible. Um, let's do that together, Elijah. Help me to keep going even when it seems impossible. Now, that was a great lesson today, and we just want to go over a verse that can help us this week when we're thinking about um, things that seem impossible and what words from the Bible, you know, what words of God and wisdom can we use and remember to help us. So Elijah, can you read the verse today, Galatians 6, 9? Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Wow, that's good. Did you hear that? If we don't give up, we'll gather a crop. And in that verse, it's not just talking about an actual crop that grows, but it means that we can bring about um, good things. Like God can bring about good things in us when we trust in him and we continue to do what's right. So um, I hope that verse encourages everybody this week and that you can um, just read through it and memorize it. Um, and right now we're just gonna pray together. We're just gonna close in prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for sending your savior to die on the cross. Thank you um, for giving his disciples um, everything that they need to spread his story, his love um, to the entire world. And thank you for giving us that same um, task to go forth and spread your word. And thank you for empowering us to do that. And we just pray that in moments when we feel like we're not equipped, when we feel like we don't have the right words to say, and we're nervous, um, that we would call upon the Holy Spirit and he would lead us and guide us. And we thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit to do that. Um, we thank you and we praise you. And we just ask that you continue to help us to keep going on even when things seem impossible. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Wow. 
All right. Thank you, friends. We will see you next Sunday. I hope you have a great week. Bye. Thank you.